Franken Tune Franken Tune Studio Hello and welcome. This is Enrique from Franken Tune Studio. Today I'm working on this retro style robot illustration. Just flat colors for now. But we are about to take it to a whole different place using our splat color process macros in Affinity Photo. These tools are designed to give your art that vintage, worn out, comic book vibe with half tones, color shifts and print textures. Let's go step by step through the process and have some fun along the way. So first, I've got my illustration open in Affinity Designer. I've already laid down the flat colors using our splat swatches library. At this point, we already have our line work separated from the colors. What we need to do is save our colors and line work as separate documents. I go to my layers panel, select the inks layer and copy it. Then I head over to file, new from clipboard, which gives me a fresh new document with just my ink lines. I'm going to save this as inks. Now, back in my original file, I'm going to save a copy using Save As and name it Colors. In this new document, I delete or hide the inks and fills layers. So I'm left with only the color fills. At this point, I've got two separate documents. One for inks and one for colors. Now I open the inks file in Affinity Photo. From here, I place the colors file into this document. Just drag and drop or go to file, place. That embeds the vector color layer inside our photo file. I rename that embedded layer to colors and that's the layer structure you'll want for working with a splat macros. Inks on top and colors underneath. Next, we open the library panel and start running the macros. The first macro in the list is Erase Paper, which we don't need because this isn't a scan drawing, just digital lines. Now, let's apply the misprinted inks global macro to the inks layer. This adds wear and tear to the line work like it's been poorly printed. I'll exaggerate the ink damage so you can see it. It gives the lines a bit of washed out gritty look. I'll dial it back to around 45% for a more natural feel. Now we're going to do our film separation. This is already a step one in the splat process. What this macro does is separate our colors into CMYK plates. You can toggle them on and off to see how each plate affects your overall colors. Let's move on to a spot colors next. I'm going to apply the spot red macro which grabs all the pure or nearly pure red in the image and puts them on their own layer. It's super handy for creating custom print effects. Once that's done, I run a spot red damage, which adds some ink grain and makes it feel like that red was printed with lower quality ink. It gets blotchy and uneven, which is exactly what we want here. Now, I'll do the same with the spot blue macro. Again, it pulls out those saturated blues into their own layer. Then I use a spot blue damage, which is a bit different. It adds fine scratches and wear. Now, here is where it gets even more fun. We've got a macro called line work phaser. This is optional but it fades out your black ink slightly and misaligns the print to mimic a bad registration. 
I'll just leave the settings on default and hit apply. Then I'll apply colors alignment, which randomly misaligns all your color plates. Again, the default settings work great here. Now we apply the screening macro. This one adds Halfton dots to simulate the look of color screens in vintage comics. This effect tones down that overly digital intensity and gives our colors a softer printed feel. I'll crank up the dot size a bit just for demo purposes, so you can see how it works. The spot red and blue layers are mostly untouched here, while the rest get a halftone treatment. Then we're going to dry out our colors. Imagine these colors are fresh on the canvas or paper and we need to let them dry. So we're going to bake colors like this. Now you can see the ink effects are applied. What this macro does is essentially dry out all layers together. They now look more integrated, less like they are sitting on top and more like they've been absorbed into the paper. We're almost done. Now I run the vintage printer macro. It brings all the elements together, the line work, the color plates, the damage and the texture. You can control the paper aging. I like to leave it around 70 for a nicely yellow look. There's also the line work temperature. Move it left for a warmer reddish hue. Move it right for a cooler bluish tone. I usually hover around the middle depending on the vibe I'm going for. The color shift is also cool, simulating a miscalibrated printer. A little goes a long way, so I stick to 5-10% to for a subtle push. Now, this one's extra, but I like to use the newspaper me macro at the end. It adds more grain, more yellowing, and kind of seals the whole thing with that old school newspaper vibe. So, as a final step, switch from the library panel to the assets panel. I'll grab one of the splat textures and drag it right into the canvas, rotate it, resize it, and place it on top of all the other layers. These textures come in multiply mode by default. You can toggle it on and off to see how it affects the piece. You can also try other blending modes. Linear burn usually works great too. In this case, Multiply darkens the artwork a bit, but I'm happy with how it looks. You'll notice it adds stains, scratches, and warm paper textures that really boost the realism. I'll switch to normal for a moment, so you can see the raw texture on its own. You can stack multiple textures together if you want to create a more layered, analog look. You'll even spot some yellowing, and there's one with what looks like a coffee spill. It all adds character to the final piece. To avoid everything getting too dark, I usually add a level to judgment on top of everything and dim the white slider to around 90%. That helps balance out the darkening effect caused by the texture overlay. Here's the fun part. Once everything's in place, you can start playing around with your layers to fine-tune how your artwork looks. Let me turn off this paper pores layer. See how the image looks less noisy now? If you find things are getting too greedy, just toggle that layer off. Now let's go a bit deeper. Try hiding your color layers one at a time. For example, let's turn off the cyan plate. See that? Those little cyan dots disappear 
and the artwork shifts slightly. Now I'll turn off the magenta layer. Our blues suddenly look a bit brighter. That kind of subtle change can really affect the mood. You can also mask specific areas of these color plates. Let's say I want to remove those magenta dots from the robot's face. I select the magenta layer, add a mask, and grab a high round brush. I've paint over the face and just like that, the dots are gone. You can do the same thing with the cyan layer. For instance, I'll mask out part of the robot size to push the color more toward yellow rather than green. The best part, everything stays non-destructive. You are free to experiment as much as you like. This kind of exploration is what I love most about working with splat effects and assets. They are designed to give you room to experiment and to make the final piece truly your own. And that's it. We turn a simple flat color robot into a greedy vintage style comic book piece using splat macros in Affinity Photo. Hope you have enjoyed this process. Remember you can grab the splat color process macro collection over at our site. Have fun experimenting and give your work that old school comic flair. Thank you for watching. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two.